What's good? It's your boy J. Lucas Nutrition. Today, we'll be talking about healthy eating to reduce disease. The top disease in the United States are cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. These conditions may be related to obesity, physical inactivity, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. These are factors which can be reduced and minimized by getting more physically active, eating more fruits and vegetables, and also eliminating empty calorie foods. So I used to work as a dietitian at Yale Cancer Hospital, and I worked with these individuals for five years. It was more so working with individuals that were diagnosed at the time, but I was passionate about how can we prevent individuals from potentially obtaining some of these conditions. And this is where I wanna give you some tips that may be helpful. So when we're looking at cancer risk, it could be multifactorial and genetics may play a role, environmental conditions, but there may be factors that are more tangible that we can touch and feel today that can reduce the risk for cancer. And that's eliminating factors that may increase your body weight, cause more obesity, getting more motivated so that you're physically active and reducing some of those factors in the diet that may play a role in increasing your cancer risk. Eating refined carbohydrate foods, processed foods, and having an excessive calorie consumption can be factors that may increase your body weight. Additionally, when you're more sedentary, you're sitting, you're not walking as much, not being as physically active, those are factors that can increase body weight. And if you can start moving, it doesn't have to be perfect walking more, taking the stairs, parking further when you're going to the grocery store. Those are things that can help to increase your physical output so that you're burning more calories, which can lead to a weight loss effort. Secondarily, there are factors that you can implement, which I will get into more detail as you're following my J. Lucas Nutrition Plan, where you can look at very simple, delicious, and nutritious recipes and principles so that you're eating more healthy, wholesome foods to lead to overall weight loss and better health to reduce your risk for cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. Now, cancer might be one of those factors that's more random and may develop without us knowing exactly what was the cause. So even for people that might be at a healthy weight, there can still be a cancer diagnosis. And of course, eliminating things like smoking, uh, drinking excessively can be uh, ways to reduce cancer, but when looking at diabetes specifically, type 1, type 2. Type 2 diabetes, which is usually adult onset diabetes, is a condition by which it is related to your lifestyle factor. Now, when we're looking at diabetes, what exactly is it? People often hear the term, they call it sugar. Uh, they believe that sugar might cause diabetes. That might not necessarily be true. Essentially, what's happening when you have diabetes is your pancreas is not producing enough insulin. Perhaps that's with type 1. Your body's not producing that insulin, which is a hormone that takes the insulin and brings the um, insulin to your cells to make them more susceptible or receptive to carbohydrates and nutrients so that they can get into your tissues like the muscle, the liver, etc. When you have type 1 diabetes, your insulin is not being released from the pancreas. So people take insulin, right? You have your insulin pumps. A lower percentage of the population has type 1 diabetes. However, type 2 diabetes is very rampant. And by the year 2050, it's predicted that 33% of the population will have type 2 diabetes. Many people are walking around right now with pre-diabetes and they don't even realize it. Well, what's happening in that stance is if you say have a higher body weight, you have more fat surrounding the cells of your body like your muscle tissue. So when you consume foods, insulin is releasing, but the cells aren't responding to the insulin. Your muscle tissues aren't opening to the food that you are consuming so that's therefore causing what's known as insulin resistance. Your cells are resistant to insulin. So you therefore have more sugar or glucose circulating around your bloodstream, 
which is extremely dangerous over time because that high blood sugar is actually like jagged, sharp edges of glass that are very finely broken down on your red blood cell. So that's where your whole uh, neuropathy, damage to the nerves, uh, retinopathy, damage to the eye, and also damage to the microvascular system throughout your body gets broken down, which can ultimately lead to heart disease as well because you get that uh, scar tissue that develops in clotting. So what can you do to help increase the sensitivity of the muscle tissue so that you can reduce the risk for diabetes and improve the condition? Physical activity. When you're physically active, you're actually opening up the muscle tissue and now the insulin is more responsive and the nutrition that you're eating, the sugar, fat and carbs can get into your muscle tissue so that it's not circulating in your bloodstream. Additionally, when we're looking at exercise and diabetes, you're going to lose weight. So with weight loss, that's therefore breaking the fat down around the cells, which therefore improves the sensitivity of insulin and helps to manage diabetes over time. So here are a few principles that you can use in order to reduce your risk for cancer, diabetes, heart disease. Get more physically active, eat more fruits and vegetables, and eliminate empty calorie foods. Stay tuned for more tips and details.